plates. There's the the circle spinning, spinning, <laughs> spinning, and as, I believe we are as right. long as it's as long as it's spinning, it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, as long as it's spinning is is moving, and if there's movement, there's life, and if yeah. there's life, there's uh, something we can choose and do about it. Well, and I see that Sophia is already already here on Instagram. Oh, hey. oh yeah, all right. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. Sophia is a dear friend and also a colleague for, here in Portugal. Mm -hmm. She works also as a coach. She also knows a little bit about NLP. And Sophia, if you want cool. to, by any chance, discover about new code, uh, Mario is a great professional. I truly recommend it. And let me start right there. Because I met Mario, uh, I believe it was 2016 when you had the training uh, in at Vienna with uh, with John mm -hmm. Grinder, and at the time it was not possible to have uh, Carmen Bostek Sinclair also to join us, and it was an amazing training because it was eight days focused on uh, new code NLP and also applications uh, for uh, uh, medical professionals. And it was so amazing. Uh, just the other day, Mario, we were talking and you were asking me, where did we met actually? What, yeah. what, was, the, what was the crossing? <laughs> what was the moment that we actually met? You know, and it was so funny I met because- so, I met so many wonderful people um, at all mm. these events. I've, I've been to Spain and then Portugal, uh, I like True. seven yeah. years in a row or so um yeah. and you know it's it's like <laughs> yeah yeah it's like a network of different places and different people yes yeah and um well mario thank you very much to join us on this fifth episode of green light other choice which are live talks and also podcast on the human experience and how can we save our life with more simplicity and um, i was uh, brainstorming uh, where should we start our conversation and uh, exchanging some ideas uh, writing to you uh, and it it resonated with me something that you have on your website uh, my nlp uh, dot I, I have right? a, um one, one question here on instagram you're still yeah black like the, the image is black is it only me or also you no, there's also the spinning, the, the spinning, the movement that we were talking, it's it also happening with me. It's, uh, we can, we can, do, okay. you can choose. Do you want to start it again? Because... Start it again. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, mm. People on Instagram will be back in a, a short few seconds. Please do join us uh, afterwards. Okay. Just don't, don't <laughs> people are saying hi. <laughs> we, we are, we are coming back. We are coming back in a few seconds. And meanwhile, here on uh, Facebook, uh, so I it kind of resonated with me that um, uh, okay, uh, starting again, starting again. Let let me just quickly check to start again here on Instagram also. So uh, I was picking up the topic, and uh, it resonated with me something that you have written on your website, which is about uh, people protecting themselves from external influences. And that got me thinking about, uh, let me invite you here on Instagram. Let me see if, so my NLP uh, underscore, right? Here you, here you are, mm -hmm. here you are. See if you receive, if you receive the invitation. If not, you can always, you I just, can always I just send the, the request. request. Okay, yes. let's and see. Now I see you. Let, so let's see if the request comes in. Good time. Instagram today is uh, is trying to poke with me. <laughs> and I was thinking about I found those words on your website and they, they deeply resonated with me, not only from my personal experience, not only from the, the past year that I've been experiencing, uh, also from clients that I'm getting, uh, and also these times that we are living in. Uh, with COVID and restrictions mm -hmm. and some uncertainties, some fear and many other states that people are experiencing. And that, that got me thinking, yeah, people still are living, still have choices to do. And what could they do differently to protect themselves from external um, influences and 
at the same time uh, create the life and the experience that they desire uh, in order to gain resilience, to experience uh, whatever they want, right? And uh, you have been helping people uh, for quite some time, but I found it I found it very curious and interesting. Oh, hello, Vintage for a Cause is a, a former guest that we had here. She's saying hello. And um, you have a background on business, on business administration, business psychology also. And then you start a path with uh, that drove you to learn from 25 trainers across the world, I believe, and in different fields. Mm -hmm. Because then you uh, learn and you got trained as, a, of course, new code NLP trainer, which is quite a track to get there. And also yes. uh, with uh, family constellations, I believe and also uh, business leadership and negotiation. So just a starting point, a starting is, what drove you to make those choices? <laughs> I mean, currently I'm, I'm, I'm trying to still get Instagram running. <laughs> but, sure, you, um, you'll join us on Instagram in a while. It doesn't just send the So let's let's wait, just continue wait, here on Facebook. Let's see, yeah, let's see if my invitation reaches you. Because Instagram for some reason today. Yes. <laughs> oh, here you are on Instagram also. And yes. now people from Instagram can welcome Mario. Give a shout out, write uh, write a comment. Welcome Mario. He's talking with us from Vienna, Austria. And uh, with that, so um it's always funny how, the, how these things happen. Um, let me know uh, what drove you to to get where you are now. Um, it all started very early with me. So uh, I was like 16 or 17 years old, mm -hmm. um, like the last years in school. And I, I, for myself, I wasn't really comfortable with myself. I wasn't really mm. like, I didn't have self-esteem a lot, so so it influenced just my social life with friends and all that. And um, then I just just went online and and googled like my problems, and one of the first thing that came up was NLP. And then I was curious, and I was like, "What is NLP? So, <laughs> what is this? Yeah. It sounds." It sounds mysterious and mm -hmm. um i'm from austria and then i got into the night train um, and went to cologne it's like a tw 12 hours train trip mm -hmm. uh the night train and i got there and uh, yeah then i was influenced by nlp the first time and uh, this was also the time that my whole life changed basically so mm -hmm. um my personality it just felt like I found more what I like to do. I got into improving myself. I um, did like one seminar after another and another and never really had the plan to make a profession out of it. Uh, but then I started at the Vienna U uh, University of Economics and mm -hmm. I was having the plan to just start to work as a consultant. But it soon turned out that it wasn't my purpose there mm. uh, my way that i wanted to to take and yeah uh, and then the the seminar journey continued that it did so many things like 25 uh, nlp trainers um including the co-creators both of them band mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. um i have I've, I've done lots of other stuff um um psychology at university and uh, also psychotherapy that's my current project so i'm doing a lot uh, mm -hmm. to help people wow 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 uh, so it seems that we have a, a very um, some common points and one of it of it of that is uh, we have started for ourselves to help ourselves to improve ourselves to know a little bit better about ourselves and how can we choose and act differently and um, with this uh, topic of art times and uh, with what I've shared before about, uh, yeah, people are experiencing some, uh, some hardships, some obstacles in, um, uh, oh, it seems that you, you, you left on Instagram, but Mario will be right back on Instagram. And um, mm -hmm. people are experiencing some uh, um, 
For 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 many people, it's the first time that they are they are experiencing some issues and some challenges in their life, and uh, for other people, it's like um, uh, the challenge or the hardship, the difficulty that they were experiencing before, just increase in intensity or in the duration. Uh, and it, it, there are several examples coming to my mind. I mean, there are couples that are um, um, spending more time together due to the lockdowns and the restrictions from the pa COVID pandemic. Uh, I, I will start to have this uh, woman client, which is a, a chief nurse. And uh, she has been going through a lot in the past years, uh, also with uh, the teenage daughter going through a kind of a psychotic break. And with all of that, she was sharing with me uh, her past as she was uh, taking beatings from the, from the, the father and uh, mother, among other things. So people are at the very, I will say at least uh, interesting and special point in their lives. And they might lack the skills or the, the resources to know how to cope, how to do something different from what they have been doing before. What, have been, what has been your learning, your experience uh, over these uh, past months? Um, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, they just seek the responsibility for mm -hmm. the things that happen to them in the outside and mm -hmm. uh, like they, they, they blame blame others and, and mm -hmm. say like why are they doing this to me and uh, sometimes it's really tough like the the example you gave it's, it's just a tough story yeah. and not not only other people but also you know uh, all the environment at the moment that that mm -hmm. we experience right now it's it's just tough, and um, I always remember the the sentence that Tony Robbins always uses to say. He says, um, "Life is not happening to you; it's happening for you." And mm. I think it's the moment when you realize that everything that comes to you is just a matter of how you see it and mm. what you make out of it. I mean, the best example is what. Um, what most most people did in this um, pandemic when it started they uh -huh. uh, got into a state where they became very reactive and uh -huh. waiting for things to happen or not to happen and they didn't take the responsibility for their life so so they were just waiting uh -huh. uh, but waiting is not the best strategy in in these times and in the moments when you think ah, why is this happening this is the time where other people are working are looking in the future are trying mm -hmm. to make the best out of it and um in the end it's it's only you uh, it's the responsibility that that, that lies uh, deeply inside of you and this is uh, i think the the only thing that matters hmm. so uh, i'm uh, hearing you uh, and it comes to my mind that um it's like being in the rain a person is in the rain is, is starting to get wet and sometimes people mm. just get stuck there waiting waiting to stop raining uh, waiting to uh, for the the world somehow to change waiting for the clothes not getting wet uh, or waiting for someone to take them out uh, or to bring an umbrella or whatever it is and uh, you i understand that you are saying if people uh, want to get uh, dry and want to avoid getting wet they uh, can focus and uh, learn how to do something about it and leaving the rain getting an umbrella asking for help or do something that prevents or take uh, take them uh, out of that place and uh, what has been happening with uh, uh, because people might react in very different ways and uh, some people might not be ready to hear this that they have the responsibility maybe because some people confuse responsibility with blame but what, what how would you help such a person that she she doesn't feel ready or she somehow struggles with accepting that she has a responsibility she can do something about it um 
having the responsibility and also knowing it is mm. especially tough in hard times. And mm. uh, you know what, what I always say is it's strength to do something about your situation no matter what you do. Getting help mm -hmm. is a sign of strength, not of weakness. And most people mm. say, ah, why do I need this? And uh, is it really that I need a coach, for example, or uh, <laughs> anyone to talk? Uh, but but that's being proactive. That's doing mm -hmm. something about it. No one can do everything. Um, this is why we have professionals all over the world that, uh, right. that help people with with yeah um, all all this stuff. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes it comes to your mind. Uh, no one knows how the mind works, and it, it needs just very um yeah special treatment every one of us and uh, i think as long as you start to think what can i do mm -hmm. um it's a it's definitely a sign of strength and you should be proud of that you should be proud of um getting help um you should be proud of just doing something about it because most people don't definitely definitely i totally agree with you the first of all that and th that could be one of the the, the pearls from this conversation that asking for help is a signal, is a sign of strength. Uh, the person that is willing to take that step uh, as uh, uh, or is showing at least more strength to do something about uh, her life or situation. And of course, yeah, we have companies with multiple people, with multiple uh, job roles and so on. And because there's also that uh, combination of uh, uh, sometimes there's pressure at work, sometimes there's uh, pressure at home, sometimes there's both. And then on top of that, they could be like past issues, they could be like uh, uh, present um, uh, concerns, and then COVID and uh, other uh, things happening at the same time. And when the, the person is showing a sign of strength and she's asking for help, there's also the realization that uh, when we were many years back in the small villages in small tribes the whole tribe worked together to to help the person uh, going through something just recently i um, was talking with a friend uh, about a family situation and it reminded me that when the person on a tribe on a small village um, was uh, like really sad really down uh, she would ask for help and the tribe, the, the villagers, the elders, the, the family uh, were there to support. And nowadays it seems that sometimes that support is lacking. So why not turn up to a psychotherapist, an NLP coach or other approach that the person uh, finds useful? Uh, with that, sometimes there's unexpected events that, uh, that happens. Uh, it could be the, the COVID, it could be a layoff in the company, or it could be uh, some uh, news within the family. I was listening to uh, Simon Sinek podcast, and he was showing uh, and sharing for the time that I've heard him. I've been following him for uh, quite uh, quite some time. And for the first time, he was uh, crying on the podcast. He was talking with his sister and talking about a really tough situation that he experienced, uh, I believe, 20 years ago. And it deeply resonated with me, the human being that Simon Sinek is, and how it was also tough for him that he uh, managed to go through and have the strength to, to carry on. Uh, nowadays, and uh, especially in the business, there, because you, 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 when you're talking about waiting, I remembered when sometimes in companies, in business, people, you know, just sit down and they, 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 they like, okay, let's wait. Let's, let's see if the, the storm passes. Let's see if this goes away. Let's see if whatever it is, right? You, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, is there a different pattern, a different challenge that you have been witnessing in companies, in businesses that you have been helping? I think that uh, hesitation is is one of the biggest things in companies, <laughs> um, and you know, it's it's also a cultural thing. I mean, mm. in in a company where people are encouraged to just move forward, uh, take risks, mm. um, you don't see much hesitation there, but. 
that's not that's not the, the normal state i would say in austria at least it's not um mm -hmm. let's see if i'm still here on instagram sorry yes uh, ba back back again back again <laughs> uh, back again, back again. I think the um, in in a culture, and that's what you said when when it comes to helping other people and also seeing other people, um, mm -hmm. evaluating them because mm -hmm. um, that's what most people do. It's mm -hmm. always we, we look for their failures. We we, we look for the the things mm -hmm. they they do bad, and uh, mm -hmm. then we feel good about it because we didn't do this mistake or yeah. We didn't fail. Um, I think this is a sign of weakness <laughs> in this case. Um, many people are frightened to even start because they see where others already are. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they just, yeah, um, they just see them and then they, they say, ah, they say, oh, okay, I, uh, it, it will take so long to get there or I'll never be there. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's never it's never about that it's 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 still about you so where you are today where you can be tomorrow um and then improving that's the only thing that matters for you and i mean this is the the, the core principle of, of of nlp it's it's like of course modeling others watching others mm -hmm. uh, learning from others mm -hmm. but never to be better than them but to mm -hmm. be a better self. Mm, yeah, I, I get what you are saying. Uh, sometimes people might lose focus uh, from what really matters for them individually. Uh, sometimes people are looking and, and are um, experiencing comparison, either self-comparison or comparison by others. You did this wrong. You, you, I expected more of you. You didn't reach the goal, um, or either for the sales or for the whatever topic and the KPI that they have in the company. Um, and uh, when people go there, uh, they are. Uh, I'm, I'm remembering that uh, we started talking about external influences, and we are still around it, right? So when people are uh, in that uh, space, in that interior space they are self-comparing with with others or they are looking for an example to follow or they are somehow uh, seeing themselves on a, on a clipboard on a ranking and someone is first and they are uh, below first and uh, with that there's an internal experience that happens that might be i i, I it's not quite that it's negative it's just negative because it's not helping the person it's not being useful for the person's development. Uh, that's what I was getting from you. And uh, with that, what can people do? What can people do about this? Uh, yes, they can focus on themselves and improving themselves. And uh, earlier on, you, you asked a very good and powerful question that I like, I like very much, uh, which is, okay, th this is happening. What can I do? Uh, keep focusing on the question, what can I do? Uh, how can I move forward? What can I do? What can I do? Uh, but about external influences, I mean, people, of course, could go on and uh, uh, exit their reality and go on to, I don't know, Alaska or some place in the, in the far, far part of the world and uh, living all alone. But that might not work as well as they want. So in everyday life, what can people do to protect from external influences? Uh, I would say there is always influence and I would say that people will always try to influence you. Uh, mm -hmm. People will always try and in my opinion they hope they fail because what I find very interesting in people is of course influencing them because we're influencing to think about their thoughts and improve themselves. But what I think is even, even more interesting is when people mm -hmm. like, have their own image of themselves and then just follow it so they are not that much influenced by others uh, but mm -hmm. this is a, a very a very um also a very uh, tough way because you have to have a lot of time with yourself and ask yourself like wow what are my my values what are my goals what is my why i mean you, you were talking about simon sinek and i think he's done 
great work with uh, all he did. And it's also a part of what we do, finding someone's why and um, the values that, uh, the roles that we are in and mm -hmm. um, maybe defining what we want and what we don't want. Because look, most people, they seek advice um, to, to, to find a path. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's your profession to, to showing people their, their path, but um, that's I think that's the that's the, the not not the not the right thing to do. I think you should seek advice. You should seek feedback. You you uh -huh. you should get as much feedback as you can, but mm -hmm. not to change everything that other people say, but to evaluate it for yourself. To look, is it congruent with what I am? Does it help me to follow my path? If it doesn't, is it maybe a better way to do? Like maybe you, you get more possibilities. It's it's always a good thing. Um, but you should always like put a filter in between, a filter in between others and you. And the filter is your values, your goals. Mm -hmm. and if it doesn't resonate with that filter, you should just leave it. Not every feedback that you get, especially not feedback of people that are very close to you, is um, the best for you. That's, I think, a very important thing. Um, because especially when you want to improve and want to become a better you, especially people that are around you, family, friends, they don't want to let you go. Uh, and it's mm. it kind of kind of feels like letting go because even imagine um, someone comes to you, a very good friend and says, you know, I want to change. Yeah. What's the first thing that happens to you? It's like, oh my God, he wants to change. Uh, maybe he, it will not be the same again. Uh, this is just normal. Everyone feels like this. Um, no matter how much personal development you've done, it happens to me, it happens to everyone. Of, mm -hmm. of course, when you reflect about that, you think about it, then it changes, of course, yeah, because then you can help your friends uh, to improve. But I don't think that's the majority of people. They always want to have you where they know you, where they, of course, can also influence you, can have an impact on you. And uh, this is why it's so important to 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 install this filter to have it, uh, because otherwise you will be just walking around and this person says this and then you walk there and then there and it's like it's like playing ping pong, <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want that. Yes, it's it's yeah. just, it's, it's okay it, it, to change your your path to success. It's it's always okay, but also if it's yeah. Uh, because you uh because you decided it and not others that's important wow yeah Th that that uh, yeah i totally subscribe that it's really important um I, I'm, I'm not sure when it was the first uh, time that i connected with that uh, uh well for me it's a learning that not all feedback is useful not all feedback will support me in my growth in my direction uh to what is important for me to what, what do I value, what are my goals, and so on and so on. And I've been experiencing that across the years, yeah, like you were saying, like uh, people uh, that want the best for me, and uh, they have their experience, they have their view of the world, and at some moments the feedback that I got was not really that interesting and useful. And I've been experiencing that with also some of my clients. And that reminded me, uh, three things uh, popped up in my mind when I was hearing you, and one uh, was this. Uh, the the second one was there was this. Um, I started uh, introducing this conversation that we first met in 2016, and um, during uh, so I was on a team that you and uh, Patrick were leading, uh, welcoming uh, John Grinder to to co give to co to be the co trainer, and so. Uh, my job was specifically to assist with whatever the logistics and also to accompany some exercises. And I was, uh, I'm not sure if you remember this moment because it really impacted on, uh, within me. Uh, and if, uh, if you don't remember, then I'll just share with you. <laughs> but I believe for the first time, I've, I've never shared this with you before. So what, what I remembered was um, there was missing, uh, so there, there was an odd number 
uh, with the, the participants and I uh, made a double, I made a pair with some with a participant to, to do the exercise. Um, and uh, you might remember his physiognomy, uh, he had a um, uh, somehow paralyzed harm and uh, we were doing the, the crowded ball game which involved throwing balls and catching balls and then with different topics and different levels of uh, uh, within the, the the process that is designed to improve uh, flow, performance, focus, and so on. And uh, I, I got so deep within the exercise. I, I was I really forgot, and I had, I talked with that participant. I really forgot everything, and we were just you know there. And then by the end of the exercise, uh, when we finish and the person visits again the situation where the person desires transformation, uh, I was just like watching really. Uh, and you came behind me and you said, whoa, excellent work. And I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And I was like, J -j -j just let me, let me watch. So this is really special for me because it's the maybe, maybe the first moment in my life that I recognize that external feedback, I didn't care about it. Because I... And it was me that you didn't care about. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care about you, basically. You're, you're <laughs> in welcome. that specific moment, <laughs> with, with, that spe with that specific contest and the, the intention that I had present, yeah. which was to support the participants' I have, transformation. I have a funny story, same context, uh, different location. Uh, uh -huh. You know, at, at the NLP trainers training uh, mm -hmm. with John Grinder, Mm -hmm. It's uh, you have to present some patterns, and it's kind of funny because you have this small group in front of you, and you're demonstrating something, mm -hmm. and you're explaining something to a group of people, something that uh, some very intelligent people in the seventies created, um, which is not that difficult for me because I'm doing it like every day, like training NLP, yeah. but. It's very difficult when John Grinder, the one that has invented all this stuff, is just standing like four meters away and is looking at you very strange and trying to get you out of your comfort zone. <laughs> that, that, for example, was a moment where external evaluation was not, <laughs> not something that I didn't care about. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. I, I totally get that. And the, the third thing that popped up in my mind is uh, the filter that you were mentioning. Because mm -hmm. many people don't know, many people I know don't know, that they can, uh, through specific exercises, uh, install a filter or create a filter to protect them from uh, feedback or uh, information from the outside and only allow in what is useful for their intention in the context for the specific situation to what they value. And uh, so, yeah, that popped up in my mind and people can truly uh, go somewhere else and reach other level with, uh, with that experience. And um, before we start to bring this uh, conversation to a close uh, in uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, uh, let me uh, ask you, with all of your experience so far and with all the trainers that you have been uh, with and uh, the clients that you have been uh, helping um, in different regions, what has been your major takeaway about this human experience? You're asking a lot. You're asking a lot. <laughs> Just bring everything down to one sentence um, yeah, you just like from everything just what the major takeaway i don't know whatever comes up we have been talking about this uh, uh, focusing on the, what's important for ourselves and our values and our goals and it's really uh in the um, what's the expression um it's pretty much about the person it's pretty much about what she wants and what she wants to do and sometimes I mean, people are waiting, right? The most Im the most important thing is mm. that you are the most important person in your life. And because you are the most important person in your life, it doesn't matter that much what other people say. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the that's the biggest point. Um, but it also means that you are first. Uh, it doesn't mean you're mm. 
yeah like like uh only only uh looking to yourself and yeah uh, are blind for for all the troubles that other people have that's that's not the case but um you can only be a resource for other people if you are resourceful and many many people think like i have to to be there for others and help others and um mm. I'm back on Instagram now <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> I, even, I didn't and, even notice that you know, yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but the thing is, it's always you that comes first. It's me that comes first. Mm -hmm. And if you understand that it's always you that comes first and in the interaction with, with other people, it's always you that comes first for you mm -hmm. and the other person that comes first for the other person. So, everyone uh in in my opinion mm -hmm. is always improving his own choices in every situation we are always doing what uh, what's uh, what's the best uh, the best option we have and mm. this may not always be good for others especially um in also it, it doesn't matter if it's private or a business context mm -hmm. um many many things happen um, many conflicts happen between people because they do not understand how can they do this to me or how can they be like that. But when yeah. you understand that every person is always the most important person for the person, for 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 yourself, for itself, mm -hmm. um, then I think a lot of things um, get easier. But that's a long way. That's a long way. This is the 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 moment when you realize that you can understand everything that happens, uh -huh. but you don't have to accept everything that happens. It doesn't mean accepting everyone's behavior, right? But it means understanding and taking responsibility, your own responsibility, and um, for for the situation. Um, mm -hmm. And it sometimes may mean that you have to leave somewhere. Mm -hmm. It sometimes means that you come closer together, mm -hmm. but you never know. Yeah, only by experience, only by uh, mm -hmm. going through the experience and the uh, uh, choosing and doing something about it. Uh, yeah, that totally makes sense for me. Uh, in, uh, I, I remember, of course, the, the story, the metaphor. Uh, it's about uh, when a person is on a plane and uh, or pretty much everywhere else where there's oxygen oxygen lacking and if there's um if we not, are not getting oxygen if we have a child by our side uh, to which do we give the oxygen first to ourselves or to the child and people forget of that if they give to the child then she will be unprotected because i didn't got enough oxygen to then continue by the side of the child and to support and to help the the child and um, Recently, I was talking with uh, with uh, someone that is is a father, and uh, he was concerned uh, how will the the child's future be in the in the um, near uh, years the ahead in the future. Um, how will the, the child react to feedback from other people? How will the child react and feel about uh, what others might do or not do? regarding uh, the specificity of the the child's situation that's in the child's life and uh, i was like my friend it's it's not a, it's not about you that's not your responsibility uh, the responsibility is to be here take care of good care of yourself to uh, support the child uh, in whatever age the the child is and sometimes people forget about themselves like you were saying and put the others in front and uh, and continue to do things for the others and not taking good care of themselves. And then, uh, from my experience, it doesn't turn out well. It doesn't work. It doesn't work out. Uh, people then uh, become uh, facing some challenges or becoming a really tough uh, spot. And that could also happen within a business. I've seen leaders trying to solve the, the team's problems trying to substitute uh, um, and take care of some tasks 
just because, I don't know, it will be faster, it will be according to their point of view. Uh, they believe that the person cannot take care of that or the person is asking for help and is consuming uh, the, the, um, the leader's time. So they just get the, themselves overwhelmed because they are not taking good care of themselves and they are picking up tasks and things from, uh, from the others. And with that in mind, like you were saying, there's a long way to go when the, the person decides, now I will start to take good care of myself. And uh, with all that we have been talking, uh, what will be a, a useful step, uh, some practical step that you will, uh, you will suggest, you will invite people to do for that? Um, to take a moment, maybe every day. Mm -hmm. Listen closely to your thoughts that you that you have. What what pops to your mind, mm -hmm. um, and asking yourself, what is really number one important to me? What matters most? Mm -hmm. And are the things that I currently do? Is the context that I'm currently in? Um, is this helping me, mm -hmm. or preventing me from from getting there? And it's always not, not always, but but um, very often the moments uh, of silence that uh, get you in the in the right direction. And this is what I learned the last weeks. Wow. But, uh, yeah, M awesome. most of the times it's 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 uh, more interesting and more important what you say to yourself than what others say about you. Yeah, I've been having that experience also, and uh, I'm saying awesome. Uh, we're we are already crossed those lines uh, minutes ago when uh, yeah, spend more time with yourself. Know a little bit more about yourself and uh, what's what you value, what your goals. And you're asking a very powerful question now also, which is, uh, is this the way that is happening? Uh, is this uh, helping me uh, or is preventing me from uh, the experience that I want or to to live and uh, have to do what I want? Um, and uh, about silence and about spending time with ourselves, uh, many people have been uh, maybe invited, if you want to say by the universe or whatever it is, to spend time with themselves and also with the, their loved ones. And um, sometimes people uh, struggle a little bit to find uh, me time when they are sharing a house, a flat or whatever it is. And sometimes they forget, uh, this has been my uh, what I've been witnessing, they forget to uh, talk uh, in, like, in a very human, direct uh, way. I, I'm especially uh, fond, I really love the, the structure of nonviolent communication to express my sensations, my feelings, and what do I value, what's important for me, and to make a request. And um, sometimes people forget to do that or they never learn to do that. But many times it's the very basic, simple, practical of taking sometimes uh, some moments for, for yourself, silence and asking those questions that you were asking, uh, you were sharing before, uh, which is what do I value? What is most important for me right now? And uh, what's happening is helping me to move forward or in the direction that I want or is preventing me. And then the question that you asked before, what can I do? What can I do now with what, what, to, what do I want? Uh, and before, with what do I have? Yeah. Before you, you close this session, I want to mm -hmm. um, thank a few, a few people that are still here um, because I've just uh, been, been uh, looking to, to who's watching. And um, I mean, uh, Tina, <laughs> it's uh, just uh, just amazing because, she, because she's been um, with me in the online training like five hours ago. <laughs> oh, wow. And awesome. she's still here. So 
<laughs> so um, also also Hannah who's who's watching um, <laughs> special thanks and greetings to you. Uh, it's just amazing work that that we all and you all do like uh, in improving yourself. It's just amazing. And Markus, for example, uh, haven't seen him for mm -hmm. two years, but he's done an amazing uh, transformation. Um, and wow. it's just just awesome uh, to see who who is here and also to see um, how to to get in touch with people um, that I haven't seen for a while, which um, mm -hmm. brings me to the conclusion that maybe I should do more insta lives in future. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you very much for showing this to me. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I was going there to thank the people that are watching us. And now that you that you mentioned that, uh, also a very uh, special thank you. I'm deeply appreciated when you told me that you started your day at uh, around 7 a.m. with uh, and you have been all day with online trainings, online meetings, and uh, online stuff going on. And I know it's plus one hour. Uh, from Lisbon, Portugal, and if here now it's 10 p.m., it means that it's 11 p.m. right where you are. And just before we go, and thank you very much for those words and for recognizing that, uh, I've been uh, witnessing and learning that also. Sometimes people that I don't uh, see for a while or uh, I've been with, uh, with um, the last time I was in touch was years ago, they, they pop up, they, they show up, and they connect uh, also here. So if you want to do Insta Lives, let me know, and I'll be sure to find some time also to 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 watch and to 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 be with you. Uh, just just before we go, I have one uh, last question, uh, which is: uh, we already touched a little bit there, uh, but I will ask the question anyway. It's like a, a, a like a mark from this Insta Lives and this Green Light Other Choice Live Talk and Podcast. And so imagine. Uh, going back to the beginning that you you cross with uh, a person that she's waiting she's waiting uh not just waiting by waiting she's specifically waiting to get the green light you know the green light when you are uh, at a traffic light or something uh, something else she's waiting for a green light to move on to do something to go in the direction that she wants and if you were to share some words or do something uh, for that person that is waiting for the green light, which would be your green light to give that person? It's always you that has the responsibility for the traffic light. So if you are waiting for green, just change the traffic light. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> It's only in your head, so why why not change it? It's very easy. Right, right, right. J just give yourself the green light and uh, discover what comes next. Awesome, awesome. I like that. I like that. Take control of the traffic light. Give yourself the green light and just go. Awesome. Mario, thank you again very, very much for being with me. It was, for me, a lovely conversation. Um, later on, for the people that uh, are still with us, thank you very much for joining us up until this hour if somehow you have someone that would like to watch this later the recording will be available uh, for now on instagram igtv uh, you will find on gridlight.joao.pombeiro also on facebook the same and mario for people that don't know you where can they follow you where they can connect with you my NLP under slash Mario Gardner on Instagram or in or my NLP dot AT Austrian address. Um, mm -hmm. Just on the website, you find everything you need to get in touch with us. Awesome, awesome, great. Uh, follow Mario is a, a excellent, excellent professional and also a lovely human being. Mario, again, thank you very much. Uh, this conversation will be available on audio later on also. And uh, if we don't cross and don't see each other anytime soon, have uh, um, lovely holidays, have a good, good end of the year. Uh, and we'll keep, uh, we'll keep in touch, we'll keep connected. Thanks for the invitation. Bye. See you. Bye. Thank you.